Members of the House, it's interesting that my colleagues on the other side railed against this legislation in the name of energy. It doesn't do a lot of good to pump more, uh, more energy into these schools, more air conditioning into these schools, more heat into these schools, when the schools are such inefficient users of energy. It makes no sense to pump more and more electricity into the schools to use lighting that's outdated, outmoded, harmful to the learning of these, of these children. The purpose of this legislation is to take a major institution in our country, our elementary secondary education system, and have the government, federal government, lend some support to local efforts that are struggling now trying to accelerate their programs to cut their energy costs in the running of their schools. And that's what this bill allows us to do. It allows us to put in place as they renovate, as they repair, as they remodel these schools, trying to recover, as all businesses are all across the country, as homeowners are all across the country, to reduce their energy cost. It allows us to partner up with them and to provide some assistance in doing that. It's rather interesting that, the, that all they can talk about on the other side is somehow that they didn't get to go to Alaska. If they'd gone to Alaska, it probably would have made a penny or two cents or three cents a difference in a gallon of gasoline today. But the fact of the matter is, why would you go to Alaska and put it into cars that are getting 12 and 13 miles a gallon? But you never went to the question of efficiency. You never went to the questions of better automobiles. We did. The first time in 30 years, this Congress improved the mileage standard for automobiles. Just think if we had done it when George Bush said he wanted it done. Today it would have been an entire different industry. But no, you listen to the oil industry and you listen to the automobile industry. Well, listen to him today as the chairman the chairman of General Motors has to admit that they didn't see it coming. They didn't see it going to happen. They laid off 20,000 workers. They shut down four plants making SUVs and trucks. Why are we listening to those people? If we continue to listen to them, we'll be the only people in the world that are listening to them. They've made one bad business decision, one bad energy decision after another for the last two decades, and it's cost them it cost them almost 450,000 jobs to their workers. It cost them market share. It cost them productivity. It cost them profit. Now, what are they doing? They're trying to play catch up. Well, we don't think the school districts in this country should play catch up like General Motors. We think the school districts in these countries ought to have an opportunity to make these more efficient in the use of the energy, more efficient in, in, in the uh, in the conservation of energy so that they can come into the modern age and they can make the changes that all the studies indicate to us not only will save them energy, not only will make the, the facility safer, cleaner and better for the learning environment that these children need, it will also dramatically change the cost of running these school districts. It's happening, but too many school districts in too many areas don't have sufficient funds. We think the federal government ought to put its shoulder to the wheel and help these school districts. Gentlemen's time is expired.